psoriasis. It's a chronic dermatosis characterized by an unpredictable course of remissions and relapses and presence at typical sites of papules and plaques. These papules and plaques are well-defined erythematous, large and silvery loose scales they have on the surface. And frequent nail involvement and joint involvement are also there in this. The pathogenesis of psoriasis, actually the etiology is unknown, but there are many factors which are implicated. First one being the genetic factors. Genetic factors are said to play a major role here. Also, the genetic basis is supported by increased familial cases. And also, there is great concordance in monozygotic twins. So, in monozygotic twins, um, psoriasis lesions were seen than in dizygotic twins. And there is identification of the new psoriasis gene now also. And association with HLA-CW6 also is found. And there are certain triggers which actually aggravate uh, psoriasis. Certain important triggers of physical trauma. If you scratch uh, the uh, the skin next to a lesion of psoriasis, there occurs lesion uh, on the side wherever you scratched, and that is called a Cobner's phenomenon or isomorphic phenomenon. Uh, it is seen at the scratch sites or surgical incisions or injuries because of that. That, that is seen. And certain infections like beta hemolytic streptococcal infections, uh, precipitates gutted psoriasis. And in HIV infection, we see this precipitation of explosive psoriasis also. And certain drugs also can, so, can aggravate psoriasis or cause psoriasis like antimalarials, lithium, beta adrenergic blockers and NSAIDs. And uh, corticosteroid withdrawal also can aggravate psoriasis or it can also precipitate pustular lesions. So, so these are the physical triggers which can cause psoriasis. And we have certain biochemical uh, changes uh, which can cause psoriasis. Under that, we have uh, cyclic nucleotides. So, increase in CGMP and decrease in CAMP can cause it. Increased levels of arachidonic acid, increased levels of polyamines, increased plasminogen activator and increased calmodulin levels also is said to cause uh, psoriasis. And lastly, we have immunological factors which again play an important role in the causation of uh, psoriasis. Here, there is an important role played by the T-cells which play a very key role, a very important role in, so, uh, in the pathogenesis of psoriasis. With the epidermal T-cells, uh, they are positive mostly for CD8 plus T-cells and dermal cells mostly have CD4 plus T-cells. And majority of these cells are memory cells also, uh, which are very important in pathogenesis. And also these keratinocytes, they express uh, the transcription factor STAT3, which may be pathogenic. Langerhans cells also secrete cytokines, which are again mitogenic and chemotactic. Certain signaling molecules have been secreted, which also is implicated in causation of psoriasis. Coming to the histogenesis of psoriasis, there are certain epidermal changes as well as dermal changes here. The epidermal changes which are important are, there is increased epidermal cell proliferation and there is increased, because of the increased growth fraction, uh, there is shortened epidermal turnover time. Normal epidermal turnover time is 45 to 70 days. This is reduced to around 3 to 5 days in psoriasis. The epidermis forms very quickly. There is this reduction in the epidermal turnover time here. That's what is seen here. Okay, That's why there is a scale formation that we see. And also there is retention of nuclear in the stratum column. Normally there is no nuclear retention in the stratum column. But here we see that. And dermal changes like this dilated and tortuous capillaries and proliferation of fibroblasts is seen. Epidemiology, it affects around 1% of the population. Two peaks of ages are see, age groups involved are senior. One is around 22 years and the other one is around 45 years. Males and females are equally affected and it is worst in winters. This is again an important point here. Clinical features, uh, usually the disease is very chronic and indolent lesions are seen and they persist for months together. Acute onset is seen in acute gutate psoriasis and generalized pustular psoriasis. These are the acute forms of uh, psoriasis. The primary lesion will be a mildly itchy papule or a plaque. It's well demarcated and if, like, and if it is present in the flexures like uh, flexures and glands, uh, the scaling will usually be absent. And the lesions are indurated. The red the matters, they look deep pink to red brown uh, plaque will be present. And these plaques, uh, this red color plaques are surrounded by, these plaques are surrounded by a zone of uh, hypopigmentate. They are, they are surrounded by a zone of hypopigmentation. There is a halo of hypopigmentation around them and that is called ringoporonov. So, that is called lingoporonov. Okay, that is present here. And the lesion is covered with a silvery white scale. That's how we identify a lesion of uh, psoriasis. Cobner's phenomenon, as I told you before, is positive. And there is a test called Grattage test which is positive here. Here, when you... Um, grate the lesions with the help of a slide, the scales will accentuate. So, scales in psoriatic plaque can be accentuated by grating uh, with the slide. So, that is a grattage, uh, that is grattage test and that's positive here. And auspice sign is seen here. 
so here you have to gently scrape the lesion with a glass slide this will accentuate accentuate the silvery scales and that is called as grattage test okay as you continue to scrape the lesion a glistening white adherent membrane appears and on removing the membrane punctate bleeding is seen so this punctate bleeding spots that are seen are called as ospid sign that is because of capillary dilatation in the dermis so these are the classic lesions of psoriasis as an erythematous well defined plaque with silvery white scales right so that is how it looks like so this is a gut grattage test being done here it gives rise to a membrane called as bergley's membrane that is the glistening white adherent membrane on removal of that you see pinpoint bleeding and pinpoint bleeding is called as ospitz that's that's basically called as ospitz sign and the sites affected it will be usually bilateral often symmetrical elbows knees scalp extensors are involved back lumbosacral area can be involved sometimes flexural areas also can be involved in intertuginous areas that's called as flexural psoriasis and scales are usually absent in flexural psoriasis because there will be increased sweating in these areas and uh, the scales won't be seen uh, so, uh, so predominantly it won't be seen so these are the usual sites affected flexural psoriasis we have here being shown in this diagram here inframammary area axillary and groin area scalp psoriasis and face is usually spared here and um, examine always the nails palms and soles and psoriasis so you can see the elbows back the feet being affected here as well variants with gutate psoriasis gutate psoriasis is mostly seen in children and adolescents it's precipitated by streptococcal tonsillitis so after a bout of streptococcal tonsillitis we see the lesions appearing and several crops of erythematous papules are seen gutate means dew drop appearance so those kind of lesions are seen mostly trunk is affected in gutate psoriasis so these are the gutate psoriatic lesions papules pustules this is called as gutate psoriasis because dew drop like appearance is seen next variant is rupoid psoriasis here heaped up scales are seen and the scales appear conical or limpet like scales and and they are associated with reiter syndrome limpet like scales limpet is actually a small conical shell fish which sticks to rocks so the scales appear like those shell fishes and that's why it's called as limpet like scales associated with reiter syndrome again we have flexural psoriasis are discussed before it is mostly seen in elderly females and um, minimal scaling is seen here erythema salmon pink lesions also can be seen here so these are the limpet like scales here okay so they look like shell fish on rocks again on the palms and dorsum of the hand so in flexural psoriasis well defined lesions are seen the affected areas are the groins axilla inframammary folds vulva gluteal cleft it has to be differentiated from candida intertrigo okay next we have penile psoriasis penile psoriasis if it is seen in uncircumcised uncircumcised males so here erythematous well defined lesions are seen but there is no scaling seen here okay if it is circumcised then a scales can be seen so this is the psoriatic lesion on the penis we have another variant called scalp psoriasis here sharply defined indurated scaly plaques are seen on the scalp massive scaling is seen it's called as pityriasis amiantasia amiantasia is asbestos like scales pityriasis means scaling okay asbestos like scaling would be pityriasis amiantasia it has to be differentiated from seborrheic dermatitis it's present very similarly but in seborrheic dermatitis we see yellowish honey colored um, uh, scales which are seen with the uh, crusting and all so that has to be differentiated and also hair forehead nape of the neck will be involved here seborrheic dermatitis so it usually not to be uh, involved so this is the lesion on the scalp seen here okay so this is of hands and feet it's bilateral and symmetrical well defined erythematous thickened plaques can be seen nail involvement in uh, psoriasis nails uh, what changes we can see uh, here we can see pitting of the nails nail plate thinning subungual hyperkeratosis under the nail plate keratin will be deposited on eicolysis destruction of the nail discoloration of the nail plate oil spots oil spots are nothing also called as salmon patches so these are the other changes which can be seen in the nails so examining nails also is very important so here we can see the nail discoloration shown here this is the pitting oil spots and thicker nails with subungual hyperkeratosis subungual hyperkeratosis is here you can see the pits here okay also joint involvement is seen in psoriasis it presents with the uh, polyarticular arthritis monoarticular arthritis rheumatoid arthritis axil variety is seen ankylosis is seen osteolysis periosteal new bone formation is seen here so this is a case of rheumatoid arthritis with the uh, psoriatic lesions complications are uh, erythrodermal psoriasis pustular psoriasis generalized or von rumbus uh, pustular psoriasis 
So this is a case of erythrodermic psoriasis here. These are the pustular variants of psoriasis. Diagnosis is by seeing the biopsy. Biopsy will show parakeratosis, regular acanthosis. Munro's microapsis again is important. And there will be dilatation and toxicity of capillary loops in the dermal papilla, which gives rise to a characteristic um, Ospitz sign. I discussed about this before. And there will be lymphocytic infiltrate in upper dermis. Parakeratosis is seen. Microapsis in the epidermis. Suprapapillary thinning will be seen. There will be regular acanthosis. Dilated torches, capillary loops are seen here. Upper dermal lymphocytic infiltrate. Differential diagnosis of psoriasis would be a discoid eczema, seborrheic dermatitis, uh, hyperkeratotic hand eczema. Here in eczema, here uh, itching will be very severe. It's variable in uh, psoriasis. Morphology is crusted exudative plaques are seen here. It's a dry scaly lesions are seen here. It's not very well defined. It's very well defined here. In seborrheic dermatitis, it's very diffuse, less indurated and no neck and forehead spillage can be there. Here also that can be there, but it's also well defined here. Greasy scales are seen. It is silvery white scales are seen here. Itching is very severe in this. It's moderate in this. Nail chins and joint involvement are seen in psoriasis, which is not seen in seborrheic dermatitis. In hyperkeratotic hand eczema, it's more itchy, less well defined, less erythematous. Here it is less itchy, well defined and more erythematous. That's how you differentiate. Pityriasis rosea also can be a differential diagnosis. This is a self-limiting condition. This is of chronic course in remissions. Um, large herald plaques are seen here. It's a variable onset here. Colorate of scales are seen here. Here silvery white scales are seen. Trunk uh, lesions are uh, seen on the trunks. Here extensor, scalp and other areas are involved. Other differential diagnosis can be candidal intertrigo. Here it is less well defined. Frayed edges are there. Less erythematous and satellite pustules are seen. Flexural psoriasis. So it's well defined and deeply erythematous. And uh, satellite pustules are not seen in flexural psoriasis. Treatment would be uh, by using topical agents like coal tar, dithranol, calcipotriol, tazoretin. Coal tar 3 to 6% is used. Dithranol is a contact irritant that is used. Uh, as otherwise called as anthralin. Dithranol is also called as anthralin. That can be used. Calcipotriol, tazoretin also can be used as a topical uh, method of treatment. Systemic agents like methotrexate, which is very commonly used at the dosage of 2.5 to 5 mg, that can be used. Um, a maximum dose is 30 mg uh, per week. So that is how uh, that is given. Acetretin, which is a systemic retinoid. Acetretin is a systemic retinoid that can also be used in psoriasis and we have cyclosporin also which can be given. Also photo phototherapy can be given in the form of photochemotherapy or uh, PUA radiation. Soralin along with ultraviolet A radiation or phototherapy in phototherapy chambers using either narrow band UVB uh, it can be given.